stand underneath the goalposts and hear them call my name and run those 40 yards to those guys waiting on me, I'd give everything I want. I would give everything I have. <coughs> but, uh, you know, you do it when you can because once you become an athlete, <laughs> and I'm an athlete, not at athlete, athlete. Uh, you can always have those memories. And I almost, I mean, it almost brings you to tears thinking about how good it made you feel. And you don't have to do it one time, and you'll take that with you the rest of your life. The, no, the real good look on you next. <laughs> My brother trained on our hill first. Uh, we trained on a golf course in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, what we were doing, we were stealing the program from the Russian Olympic team on how they trained. Uh, during that time in the early 60s and 70s, with the exception of uh, Bob Hayes, the Russians had the fastest sprinters. I mean, if you could beat the Russians, you can win a medal. And what they did, they figured out a way to improve the quadriceps by running uphill to increase the strength and the length of stride by running downhill at full speed. Uh, and that's what we did. I mean, we did that. We'd have, we start off with 15, 16 guys and we'd end up with Walter and me. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're never too old to learn and there are no new ideas. They're just good ideas recycled. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes, I did teach him everything he knows, and if you <laughs> pass that word around and send me a bill, I'll send you a check. I saw somebody else's hand. Yes, sir? Um, I, you know, every time I try to play for a sport, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, I always find myself going for 34, the number. Uh, is there any reason particular why he chose that number? Because, well, let me tell you the whole story. In our hometown, uh, the best running back always got 22. Uh, Jimmy McFarlane, who played at Jackson State and played for the Baltimore Colts, he wore 22 in high school. Don Bell, who followed him, wore 22, and he ended up being one of the best punt returners in NCAA history. When Don left, I got 22 in high school. When I left, Walter got 22 in high school. So it's just kind of one of those things, you know, if you got 22 in Columbia, you were a hell of a running back. Uh, I managed to get 22 in college. When Walter got to college, he didn't know what number to get because I wasn't giving up mine. <laughs> so uh, they were giving him a number, and he was a fullback. All of our running backs were twos from 20 to 29, and all our fullbacks were from 30 to 40. So the only number available was 34, and they gave him 34, and uh, he made it famous. So re remember... It is not the number that makes you famous, it's the performance. So if they decide to give you 33, mm -hmm. make 33 famous. Make yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, I, I mean, actually, um, I have two questions, if I can remember the second one. But the first one was, um, my son goes, I have another son who goes to a Walter Payton High School. And, I mean, it, it was just... We'll be there uh, tomorrow. That's what I wanted to know. That was my second question. But the, going back to the first question was, how come there's no football field there? Well, you know where it's located. Right. You need a certain amount of space. space. Right. And... Because they do have that backfield, but I heard it's owned or leased by somebody else, but... It is. Okay. Where is it? You know, we're in the process... We're in the, We are in the process of trying to locate an area downtown uh, to build a field. We had two problems. That, you know, they sell land in downtown Chicago by the inch. Right. <laughs> and secondly, we couldn't find enough that would be, be fitting to Walter Payton High School. So it's, it's so tough, they, but they so made the playoffs this year. Yeah. What? They made the playoffs this yes, year. Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah. Very exciting. I just thought you might like to know I was at the game the other night. And besides number 54, there are more 34 jerseys than any other, just an yeah. informal count walking around. Yeah. Really? Still. Mm -hmm. Still. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you do it the right way, it does not matter how many yards or touchdowns you score, people will appreciate and want to associate with you by what you do and how you do. Uh, nobody can remember how many yards 
who all to exactly <coughs> have in this group, except me. I know you do. <laughs> Security! <laughs> but you remember that run he made. You remember that catch he made or that block he made. And that's what you want. You want people to remember what you did as long as they remember who you are. Because they will forget. Somebody's going to Somebody's broken the yardage record. Somebody's broken the touchdown record. But we all wear 34 jerseys out of respect for the man who did it the right way. We tried to get a piece of that 34 jersey and take one of it off and have 31 that didn't work. Didn't go over there. <laughs> there was no 31 for the Bears and they kind of figured it out. Are there any other questions? I, I mean, I, I'm enjoying, this is therapeutic for me because I've been in Chicago uh, doing this since Tuesday and I never get tired of answering questions about Walter and hearing Walter Payton's story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it makes me feel good as an older brother that uh, 13 years after he's left uh, this earth in the city of Chicago, 13 years in uh, a couple of years, 99. Yeah. That they, you still remember what he did and how he did. Sure. Yeah. I'm a race fan, and when Walter was racing Trans Am up at El Car Lake, I remember one time when uh, people would come up to him, Walter signed, Walter, Walter, Walter. There was this little kid there, probably about nine. He was terminal. You could tell, you know, but you could tell. Walter told everybody, you got to wait, you got to wait. He spent three hours with this kid, because um, I waited, and he uh, put him in his car, put his uh, helmet on him, uh, signed yeah. We were in uh, Phoenix uh, playing in a celebrity tournament. Walter finished six, I won. And there was this little girl and her mother, and it was for the National Cancer Society. And this little girl would follow us around, and we just became good friends. So uh, when they presented the awards, I said, Look, keep this to next year, and I'll get it back for you. I went over there, Walter, and it, it, it kind of teared up. I said, what's wrong? Something wrong? He said, she's not going to be here next year. And, uh, it, you know, he had time for everybody. And it just, and he knew this, and he was, he saw it and just, just kind of cheered up. And uh, it, it makes you respect, family member or not, it makes you respect the man more. <clears throat> if you really don't, that was the other reason we wrote the book. There's a lot of garbage that was out there. And the guy who wrote the garbage didn't know what. And most of the information he got, he just either fabricated uh, to make, to sell books, or got it from somebody uh, who was disgruntled, that had worked for Walter, had an axe to grind, <coughs> and they got together and they put out a piece of fiction that really does not uh, bear reading. And uh, that was the other reason. I mean, people in Chicago. Hmm? That's why no one knows who he is. People like that. Well, he, uh, again, it took me a long time to decide 10 is mightier than the foot in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, you people keep the memory alive and make me prouder and prouder and wish that I had a chance to play a year in Chicago. 1985 would have been a year. <laughs> <laughs> Any more guys? Uh, we I don't know if we've up, we've sold all these. No, we need to go buy ours. We will we will sit here and sign every one of them and personalize them if you like. Okay.